Professor Race here. Let's talk about fused sentences and comma splices, how to find them and how to fix them. Run-on sentence. The definition of a run-on sentence is it is two or more complete sentences which are run together with no adequate sign given to mark the break between them. That is considered a major error. There are two types of run-on sentences, the fused sentence and the comma splice. Fused sentences and comma splices are considered major errors, and they can take a significant toll on your paper. Now, some teachers mark fused sentences and comma splices both as run-on errors and do not differentiate between the two types. So if they see a fused sentence or comma splice, they may just mark either one as a run-on sentence. But it's important that you know the difference between the two, even though they are very similar errors. Let's start with a fused sentence. A fused sentence has no punctuation to mark the break between two complete sentences. Take a look at this example here, and let's notice where the fused sentence occurs. In 1996, Larry Page and Sergey Brin started out as graduate students at Stanford University. They ended up founding Google. You could probably tell just by the drop in my voice inflection and the pause right here. We have the end of one complete sentence and the beginning of a second. This is where the fused sentence occurs because we have two complete sentences, but there is no sign to mark the break between them. Now let's talk about the comma splice, which is the other type of run-on sentence. A comma splice uses a comma incorrectly to connect two complete sentences. Now, a comma alone is not enough to connect two complete sentences. Notice the comma that creates the comma splice here. Remember the same sentence in 1996, Larry Page and Sergey Brin started out as graduate students at Stanford University. They ended up founding Google. Notice the only difference is now a comma has been added, but it is still not a correct sentence. In fact, a few sentences has just been changed into a comma splice, another major error, by the addition of the comma between two complete sentences. Now, let's talk about this term comma splice. It's rather an odd term, don't you think? Have you heard the term splice used before? The word splice actually means join, and you may have heard it in the context of wires, splicing wires, for example. When you need to splice two wires together, you twist the two ends of the wires together and then you wrap some insulated tape around the connection where they are joined or make some sort of a bond between them. So that's an example of a splice. Gene splicing is also another place where we use the term splice Gene splicing involves cutting out part of the DNA in a gene and adding new DNA in its place. So it also involves joining. So a comma splice is so named because it basically describes the error of trying to tape or join two sentences together with a comma alone, and that's incorrect. Here's another example of a comma splice. Caressa's favorite summer food is ice-cold watermelon. However, Matt prefers sweet cantaloupe. You can see that this comma right here between these two complete sentences is creating a comma splice. This comma right here functions sort of like a piece of tape sort of like taping those two sentences together, 
The problem is you cannot use a comma alone to join two complete sentences together correctly. So, now that we know how to find few sentences and comma splices, how can we correct them? Let's talk about it. There are four ways. You can use a period and a capital letter, of course, to separate the two complete thoughts. You can use a comma and a joining word to connect the two complete thoughts. You can use a semicolon or you can use subordination. Let's talk about these. First, one option is, of course, the easiest. Use a period and a capital letter to separate the two complete thoughts. I mean, we're already working with two complete sentences anyway, so why don't we just change this little comma right here into a period, capitalize the first word of the second sentence, and now we have a corrected comma splice. Another option is to leave a comma in place or add a comma and a joining word, also called coordinating conjunctions. Now, there are only seven coordinating conjunctions. The acronym FANBOYS can help you remember them. F is for FOR, A is for AND, N is for NOR, B is for BUT, O is for OR, Y is for YET, and S is for SO. You can use a comma with one of these joining words or coordinating conjunctions, and that will fix a fused sentence or a comma splice. Here's an example. Back to our same sentence. In 1996, Larry Page and Sergey Brin started out as graduate students at Stanford University. We could put a comma right there, and we could add a conjunction like and right here. They ended up founding Google, and now we have corrected this error. A third option is to use the semicolon. The semicolon can be used to mark the break between the two complete thoughts. The semicolon signals more of a pause than a comma alone, but not quite the full pause of a period. Let's take a look at this fused sentence right here. Sean is majoring in telecommunications. He wants to become a television anchor. Obviously, Right here is where we have a fused sentence. So let's use a semicolon right here. And we have fixed that fused sentence by using just a semicolon alone. A fourth option is to use subordination. Now, subordination is a way of showing that one thought in a sentence is not as important as the other thought. Take a look at this example. Which statement is subordinate to the other one or depends on the other one to make sense? Because Rita didn't want to die of lung cancer, she decided to stop smoking. This one right here, because Rita didn't want to die of lung cancer, that is the subordinate clause or dependent clause. It cannot stand alone. It depends on the main clause. She decided to stop smoking. Now, now that we know what subordination is, we can use it to correct few sentences and comma splices. To create subordination, use a dependent word or a subordinating conjunction. Here are some examples. After, although, as, because, before, even though, if, since, unless, until, when, and while, and there are several others. Now, let's use one of those dependent words to correct this fused sentence. My boss gave me smoked salmon for my birthday. He knows I am a vegetarian. Right there, obviously, is our fused sentence. So let's fix it by inserting one of these dependent words right there. How about even though? My boss gave me smoked salmon for my birthday even though he knows I'm a vegetarian. Now we have fixed that fused sentence by inserting a dependent word and creating a dependent clause, even though he knows I am a vegetarian. A word about punctuating. 
subordinate clauses. My boss gave me smoked salmon for my birthday, even though he knows I'm a vegetarian. When your dependent clause is the second clause in the sentence, no commas are needed. But if your dependent clause be comes first in the sentence, like it does here, even though he knows I am a vegetarian, put your comma right here. My boss gave me smoked salmon for my birthday. To sum up, finding fused sentences and comma slices in your writing is a lot easier if you read your writing out loud. So try that. Listen for where one complete idea ends and another complete idea begins. Have you marked the end of each complete idea properly? Or have you improperly run two sentences together? Watch out for these run-on sentences. And remember, there are two different kinds. The fuse sentence and the comma splice. Good luck!